I was quite the tenderfoot for Easter egg hunting when I started the Reign of Chaos videos, but by the Frozen Throne I must have gotten pretty good at it. The only other secret I seemed to have missed in the entire campaign was on Wrath of the Betrayer. There are two unused items in the file, a trove of gold and a trunk of gold, worth 500 gold and 300 gold respectively. Besides that, there is a tiny function you can exploit on the final level. If you go to this point, Furion and Illidan can exchange items with each other. This may not seem like much on this level, but since the scenario saves Illidan in the game cache to be loaded in the fifth level of Curse of the Blood Elves, you can hand off some pretty useful items for Kale to use later. In Misconceptions, I found out that you don't have to sail all the way up to the Murlocs and Albatross tree. You can simply knock down these trees with a flame strike and encounter them immediately. There are a few disabled triggers I overlooked on this level too. One of them is a leaderboard trigger. Originally, the golden lumber you needed to repair all the observatories was displayed like this. Two other triggers display very helpful hints. The undead are not nice, and don't do drugs. Hi, my name is Roy. I'm a magic addict. Hi, Roy. Also, this Knoll, Snarlmane the Blood Gorger, has the same name as the Knoll Chieftain that Sylvanus possesses later, but they're clearly not the same creature. Maybe the name Snarlmane is just as common as the name John is to us or something. Lastly, I found out that if your last peasant dies, another one spawns for you. Learn something new every day. On just about every map, there are debug triggers that the devs set up to be able to check cutscenes and checkpoints easily. This map had a few particularly funny ones. These two seem to have been used to check how the undead use blight on their respective bases or something. This one says, your keyboard sucks ors in the comment, and displays the text blizzy into hizzy when it turns the blight on. The other one turns the blight off and reads, no blight for you. Kind of fun to see the devs having fun during the map making process. I often make similarly silly comments on my own triggers for my own amusement. I also found the Book of Beards in this level's files again, so maybe it's not a certainty that it was supposed to be found later in that undead level after all. Speaking of, I also found out that the Book of Beards, or more specifically, the Beg Book of Beards, is found later in WoW. It features such favorites as the Thundermar Triple Fork and the Blammenhammer Chin Strip, and is found in Treasures from Grim Batal, a quest reward from the quest Soften Them Up. In the Dungeons of Dalaran, I realized a rather egregious oversight with the essence of a June item. Legends speak of an intelligent orc who found the heart of a June. Thrall found this a few months ago in the storyline. There's no way legends could speak of it, nor is it possible that a June's heart in the Stone Talon Caverns across the world could make it here after Dalaran was already destroyed. Apparently, the Kirin Tor knew how to travel through time and space if this item has any canonical lore to it. The secret level has a trigger comment that reads, CVS sucks. Kind of funny that a dev would use a trigger comment to vent in. I'm not sure what CVS stands for in this case. The pharmacy chain, maybe? Concurrent version system software? Cyclic vomiting syndrome? We'll probably never know, and I doubt the developer of this map even remembers doing this all those years ago. The interlude, The Dusts of Outland, has got some weird stuff in it, and I'm not sure why. For one thing, Arthas and Jaina each have a line of dialogue, but their sounds used in level 4 of the human campaign in Reign of Chaos, not level 4 of the Frozen Throne. Was it accidental? There's also a Mountain King in the unit editor whose name has been changed to Cargan Iron Knee. Why would something like a name, which is only visible during gameplay, be significant in an interlude level? The next few levels, starting with the search for Illidan, are organized a bit strangely if you look at their internal components. For example, there's this ULD from Kale. We'll have to bring the cage back to the Draenei village before we can free him. The sound files of Akama introducing himself are in the same folder, even though you don't meet Akama until a couple of levels later, so I wonder if originally you met the Draenei before you found Illidan's cage. Speaking of the cage, there are two unused models and one unused interface icon in the game that could have been part of this map. This one is called Illidan Imprisoned, and this one is Illidan Wagon. Since the wagon clearly resembles the smaller wagons Kale uses on Shards of the Alliance, my best guess is that originally, Maev had Illidan imprisoned in a cell or something like this, and you had to capture him using this wagon and bring him back to a Draenei village. It doesn't look like he could fit in this wagon very well, but maybe it was enchanted? Clearly, though, there was some kind of debate done around these levels before the one we have now was settled upon. In the interlude, Illidan's task, I was a bit confused at the dev's choice to show Illidan in his pre-demon form in the flashback with Kill Jaden. He had clearly consumed the skull of Gul'dan by this point, so why wasn't he in his demonic form? In Reign of Chaos, it made sense that he was in his metamorphosis ability form when he consumed the skull. It gave a bit of lore on the ability and saved them from having to make a whole new model. 
but I don't think it makes sense for him to revert all the way back to his night elf form. I guess his transformation could have been a bit more gradual into his current form, but I think in reality the devs just wanted it to look like the scene was farther in the past and forgot about the specifics of the story. There's some pretty cool ULDs in the last level I overlooked. Check these out. Magtheridin stores his sky barges at the bastion ahead. Those barges will allow us to assault the Citadel's upper tiers with impunity. We must claim them immediately. The sky barges are ours. Now, on to the upper tiers, my warriors. Apparently, along with the demonic siege weapons, which I'm sad aren't those infernal juggernaut things, instead they're just crude dranite catapults, you could also get some sky barges, presumably ones similar to the ones the undead use in some missions. My guess is the sky barges made it too easy to fly right up and attack Mag Theridan or something, so they were scrapped. Here are some more ULDs that aren't found in the level. Strike them down! Show these tired wretches what true fear is. Is that all you've got, demons? Is that all the power you can muster? We've broken through their first line of defenders. Strike hard, you Victory warriors. Victory is near! Victory Out to the vengeance of the mother. Fight on, strike them now. Slay them. Whoa, whoa, guys, chill. That got excessive really quick. Maybe like one of those could have been kept in the game, but I don't know. They don't add a whole lot. Also, if you're a lore guru, you may notice that these two orc blade masters are Rend and Mame, the sons of Black Hand and the chieftains of the Black Tooth Grin Clan in Warcraft 2. If you know what happens in World of Warcraft in terms of these brothers, you'll note that there's no way they could be here in Outland. And of course they don't die at this point either. Either they're just fell orcs with amazingly coincidental names, see Snarl Man the Blood Gorger earlier, or more likely they were just one of Blizzard's more blatant retcons in World of Warcraft. Lastly, Kargan Iron Knee is in the ending interlude file again. He must have just been a joke for the entertainment of nosy fans like me to find. Take the fight on my there's an interesting secret I didn't know about the first time through King Arthas. At the time of working at Blizzard, our friend David Freed's girlfriend was named Jennifer Deem. He named this elven ranger in her honor as Janala Deemspring. Now she has her own page on the WoW Wiki. You can also see where the Lich King was in the opening cinematic if you do the map reveal cheat. There's a similar situation with Frostmourne and trudging through the ashes, though it gets hidden after the cutscene's over. Not sure why it wasn't the case in this scenario. Cargan Irony makes an appearance in the return to Northrend along with the Book of Beards. He's also hiding in Boiling Point and a new power in Lordaeron, where there's a strange custom creep called a Jacob's Reject. It looks basically like a Dalaran Reject, but it's bigger and slightly more powerful. My best guess on the name is that it was a joke made by, or on, Trevor Jacobs, an artist who still works for Blizzard. David told me that sometimes the artists made art passes on the levels and added or changed things, so this could have been a tongue-in-cheek example of artist mischief. I'm surprised I missed this the first time through, but in Into the Shadow Web Caverns, there are two unused models called Dwarven Axemen. They seem to be somewhat sad attempts at providing the Dwarven army with a melee unit, but they use the bandit models. I could tell that developers regretted not making more Dwarven models to work with, since they have to do their best at using only riflemen and mortar teams throughout the entire level. Also, there's a special boss that is only available to encounter on hard difficulty, an immense Nerubian queen named Nezar Osret. Her scepter is obtainable through the archaeology skill in World of Warcraft later, so she's more than just a passing boss like most of the game. Speaking of passing bosses, I noticed that the Forgotten One unit file was modified from its original version and the level it's in. In other words, there's an official set version of a Forgotten One in the game's files, and in the one campaign map it appears in, the developers ended up modifying it. That's very interesting to me. It indicates that they may have tried it one way and then tinkered with it after playtesting. The description of the regular Forgotten One says, can cast Spawn Tentacle, Firebolt, and Charm, but the unit was modified to instead cast Breath of Fire, Flame Strike, Spell Immune, and cripple, and it kept spawn tentacle as well. I don't know if you guys will find this as clever as I did, but you know how Arthas walks into this room and it caves in? These doodads didn't change to a broken state. This is a camera trick. There are actually two rooms, one intact and one broken up, and using some teleportation and camera movements, the game makes it look like the room got trashed from the cave in. I completely missed this secret after the elevator room. After you meet up with a Nubarak, under these rocks is a lever. If you pull it, an elevator will rise up and grant you access to a ring of protection plus five up in the corner here. I guess these caverns had some more intriguing secrets than I gave them credit for. A Symphony of Frost and Flame is, I realize now, a clear reference to A Song of Ice and Fire. In this level, I realized while finishing up the video that if you destroy Kale's Altar of Kings, it drops a Captain America helmet. Oh, 
excuse me, a helm of valor for you. There's also an intriguing exchange between Arthas and Kale. Are you still upset that I stole Jaina from you, Kale? Later lore was written to explain this. Apparently Kale had a thing for Jaina, but she was absorbed in her studies and liked Arthas better, so this is definitely a low blow on Arthas's part. If you'd like to read into the soap opera more, the story goes into more detail in the novel Arthas Rise of the Lich King. Since making the Rexar video, I've since learned that this project was completely unplanned in the beginning. Blizzard was originally not going to make any orc campaign at all in the Frozen Throne, but thanks to Tim Campbell's urging and hard work, the Diablo-style RPG campaign came about and was added to the game. As far as I can tell, besides the first act's name being a reference to the song To Tame a Land by Iron Maiden, I only missed three easter eggs in this campaign. The first is this tome of strength hidden in the Orgrimmar tunnels. You may have noticed I actually showed this on the video without talking about it. That's because I found it while I was looking for another easter egg after my lines had already been recorded while I was recording footage for the video. Whoops. The second is a ULD in Thunder Ridge. These tracks indicate that the lizards came through this pass. I'm curious as to where it leads. I don't know. Kind of a weird one. I'm guessing he's talking about the pass to the lumber mill, but in any case, the level's pretty clear without this line of dialogue, so I don't miss it. And finally, if you kill the white-haired paladin Dagrin the Orc Slayer, who was earlier seen in King Arthas, he'll drop an orb of lightning. You obviously have to do this before the Naga wipe out the humans, so it's an interesting secret. On the Warcraft Collector's Edition DVD, cinematic director Nicholas Carpenter says that there's a Zerg Hydralisk hidden somewhere in the charging army in this part of Thrall's vision, as well as other hidden characters. I personally can't see anything, but they're supposedly in there if you look hard enough. He also says that one of the artists etched their initial or something into Frostmourne in the Betrayal cinematic, but again, I can't see anything. I hope I'm not missing anything obvious. And finally, last of all, I found out while recording this video that if you beat the game on hard mode, the credits sequence changes slightly, causing Inferno meteors to fall from the sky and splatter the units as they walk down the path. I invite you to watch this map when you can. I hope besides being just entertaining, these credits videos can help you appreciate the work that went into this amazing game. Guys, that is it. All the easter eggs and secrets in the Warcraft 3 campaigns. Of course, even though I looked really carefully this time around, there may still be several that I missed. You're welcome to point them out in the comments below for others' enjoyment if you find them. I'm glad I could be a part of this project and dig up all these secrets from so long ago. I've learned so much about my favorite game in the past few months. I'd like to once again thank David Freed for being an invaluable resource during the making of these videos, and for staying up late and working Saturdays all those years ago to work on the game we now take for granted. You can follow his YouTube channel here if you like. And I'd like to extend a very special thanks to all of you as well. I've said it before, but every like and comment is very much appreciated. I could not have found all the secrets without you guys. Well, most viewers have probably turned off the video by this point, so I'll just sign off. Have fun, guys. As for me, I think I'm going to play Warcraft 3 from start to finish. See you later.